for a while, and um, I don't know why they scheduled Tuesdays. But I was never able to attend on Tuesdays. This today will be the first time. Okay, so let's start. Uh, Twenty-four. First question: Anything on the test that you would like to see? I will post solutions. Yes. Which problem? One C. One C. Okay. So in one C, we have the absolute value of x minus one equals one minus x. So in this case, we have to write two situations. Situation number one is x minus one equals one minus x. And situation number two is x minus one is the opposite of one minus x. If you didn't put in parentheses, which is okay, but you had to distribute all the way. So if you don't write this, then you have to write negative one plus x. If you wrote negative one minus x, I couldn't give credit for that part. Javi? Okay, is that clear? So when I solve the first one, I move x to the other side, I get 2x. I move 1 to the other side and I get 2, so x equals 1. So this is what we get from the first equation. Now, x minus 1 equals negative 1 plus x. You add 1 to both sides, you subtract x from both sides, you get 0 equals 0. This is good, but it's not good enough. You have to write the conclusion. What is the conclusion for this? Right. Infinitely many solutions. I don't have to include this one in here because it's already included. In the infinitely many solutions, x equals 1 is included. Good. Next question. Anything else from the test? Anything else? Which one? 2b. 2b. Yes. So 3, the absolute value of x plus 2, minus 6, greater than or equal to 9. I've seen so many different things in that one, so many. I even saw 3, the absolute value of x plus 2, minus 6, less than or equal to negative 9. I saw all sorts. Okay? Obviously, I have to clean it up. It's not cleaned up. I cannot even decide what to do before I fully clean it up. I have to add 6. 3, the absolute value of x plus 2, greater than or equal to 15. I must divide by 3. So now, since it's already simplified, cleaned up, then I have to write two things. They cannot include the absolute value again. If I circle, bless you, if I circle that, you can have the absolute value in these two things that we are going to write. So you have to write x plus 2 greater than or equal to 5 and x plus 2 less than or equal to negative 5. If you wrote greater than or equal to negative 5 or something else, I could not give credit for that because remember we said there are only two types. This type of absolute value inequality or this type. You cannot combine them. It's either this or it's this. Okay, so then from here I have x greater equal to 3, x less than or equal to negative 7. And I have to have the union in between. I have to put this first, from negative infinity to negative 7, and then this from 3 to infinity. Any questions? Yes. Um, do you have, uh, Victoria? 9F. I'm sorry? 9F. 9F. Nine 9F. Nine 9F. Nine yes. 6 minus the square root of negative 12 divided by 2. We had examples like this, so let's do this again. First of all, if I see something like this, it's zero points. I can't give more. Why? Because you are simplifying by two in a term. You're simplifying part of a term. This is not a factor. So you cannot do that. 
So let's go back one more time. 6 minus the square of negative 12 over 2. Remember, this is not a real number. It's the square root of a negative number. So this is not real. So I have 6 minus the square of negative 1 times the square root of 4 times the square root of 3 divided by 2. So I have to break this up into the square root of negative 1, the square root of 4, and the square root of 3. All these represent the square root of negative 12. Now, I have 6 minus. This is, I know what it is, right? What is this? I. What is this? Yes. So 2i, the square root of 3, divided by 2. Yes, I want to simplify, but I have to separate it first. There is no other way. And now I can say, or write 3 minus i, the square root of 3, and that's done. If you go back to your notes, I specified this. Do not cross in a sum or difference. So these are kind of like, you know, two terms. They're not factors. You cannot simplify. Good. Javi? Um, Which one? Three. Number three. Okay. We have x plus y greater than or equal to 3, and we have negative x plus 2y greater than 4. I was hoping that this was done. However, some mistakes occurred here. First, I have to write this. Then I have to find two points. When x is 0, y is 3. So 0, 3. When y is 0, x is 3. I have the necessary points to graph the first line. Not the inequality just yet, just the first line. So 0, 3, 3, 0. Okay. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. At this point, I stop and I look here. Since I see the equal symbol, I know I'm going to have to graph it as a solid line. So this is only the line x plus y equals 3. It divides the plane in two parts, and I'm checking this region because I want to use 0, 0. So I go back to x plus y, 0, 0, 0 greater than or equal to 3. No, 0 is not greater than or equal to 3. So I have to shade in the opposite territory, this. This represents x plus y greater than or equal to 3. I repeat, for negative x plus 2y equals 4. Negative x plus 2y equals 4. x equals 0. y is 2. So 0, 2. y equals 0. y equals 0. x equals negative 4. So negative 4 comma 0. So here it is. Negative 4, comma 0, and 0, comma 2. However, this inequality symbol does not have the equal symbol. So I cannot graph this line as a solid line. So this is only negative x plus 2y equals 4. Again, I'm checking the bottom territory because I will be using the origin again. 0, 0. 0 greater than 4? No, again, <clears throat> no. So this would be negative x plus 2y greater than 4. And now I have to intersect green and orange. And green and orange are here. This is where both. Not points on this line, but yes, points on this line, and not the vertex here but everything else. Yes, Becky? Yes, any questions on three? Javi? Okay, you said four, bless you, four? Four, so problem four, let's take a look. Assume that the variables and radicands can be any real number, should ring a bell, right? 
absolute value. Bless you. Okay, so I have the cube root of negative 81, a to the sixth, b to the 15th. However, I will not use the, the absolute value here because it's a cube root. And this will be negative 27 and 3. So this becomes the cube root of negative 27, the cube root of 3, the cube root of a to the 6th, and the cube root of b to the 15th. This is negative 3. This is a squared. This is b to the 5th. I put them in front, and then I leave this alone. So negative 3, a squared, b to the 5th, and the cube root of 3. Any questions on this problem? Any questions on this problem? Okay. The fourth root of x to the 24th, y to the 20th. So this is x to the 6th and y to the 5th. But y to the 5th could be negative. Therefore, I will use the absolute value on y to the 5th. I saw someone use the absolute value on everything. That's fine, too, because we don't know a lot of the properties. But I would have split it first, and then I will on, only put the absolute value on this. There is no need to put the absolute value on x to the sixth. But I did not consider that wrong. OK. Um, so, But I recommend split it first. And then the last one, the square root of x squared minus 2x plus 1, I even saw this. I even saw x times the square root of something. Are these acceptable? No. Not acceptable. So the square root of, we have an agreement from day one. From August, what was it? August the 30th? We signed an agreement on August the 30th. So what does this get replaced by? So then the answer is this. Now on the radical equation in 5b, um, you didn't square. Some of you did not square x minus 2, so you got something else. Uh, also on the extra credit, you squared and you eliminated both radicals from the beginning. That's not possible. Remember, two radicals, you have to square twice. Anything else? Other questions on this? Yes, please. 5B. 5B, yes. So in 5B, we have the square root of 2x minus 1 plus 2 equals x. So I have to move 2 to the other side to isolate the radical. The radical has to be alone on one side. The square root of 2x minus 1 equals x minus 2. Now I will square both sides. The left-hand side is easy, but we have an agreement on the right-hand side. So this is 2x minus 1. What about the right-hand side? Of course. So now this is what type of equation? Quadratic, I have to set it equal to 0. I have to subtract. I saw someone added 2x to both sides. We have to subtract 2x from both sides, right? And then we add 1. Someone was very close, but not factoring correctly. So x minus 1 and x minus 5 equals 0 x equals 1, x equals 5. It turns out that 1 doesn't work. A positive number plus 2 cannot equal 1. And this was the only one. Anything else? I even saw someone that we only talked about that under the square root for the distance, someone wrote this. 
and we mentioned that, right? So we are under the square root for the distance, we add two positive quantities. When I add two positive quantities, can I ever get a negative 7? No. So please remember that. The distance formula is the square root of something squared plus something squared. This is positive, this is positive. I can never get negative 7, right? Okay, so this is x2 minus x1, y2 minus y1. Any questions? Anything else? Say it again. Number 10. Number 10. Yes. What happened with number 10? I, I have a question on number 10. What happened with number 10? So if I'm given something like this, and I'm asked to find all sides or the side, what am I going to write? Very good. Equals 5 squared or 25. Well, someone wrote that x squared plus x squared is x to the fourth. Really? Is x squared plus x squared an apple plus an apple x to the fourth? <coughs> we all have test. I have to give you that. We all have test anxiety and everyone, you know, we can come up with stuff. Okay? So, I, I did that this Sunday on something that not on math. So, no, not on math, but I was just so disappointed with myself. I had to apologize to three people because we were all, all four of us were on the same team and I let down the four, three other people. So, so I give you that. So x squared equals 25 divided by 2 and I have to take the square root from both sides. So x, I should write plus or minus the square root of 25 over the square root of 2. I should write plus or minus 5 over the square root of 2 and rationalize it. But I cannot really write plus or minus. Why? Yes, it's x squared, so I have to have two solutions. But I cannot write plus or minus in this particular case because x is a distance. So x equals 5 the square root of 2 over 2. So yes, I also give you the fact that this is an evening class and you're probably coming from, you know, one job or maybe two jobs. So I know, I know it's not easy. 9E, let's take a look at 9E. 9E, very good. So 2, the square root of x plus 3y over the square root of x minus 2, the square root of y. So the only thing that we can do here is rationalize the denominator. Unless I am told to rationalize the numerator, I will always rationalize the denominator. I will rationalize the numerator when I have certain, certain expressions that need to be simplified. So it's possible, but not in this case. So what do I rationalize it by? I saw all sorts. I saw negative the square root of x minus 2 the square root of y with both. I saw also something like um, 2 the square root of y plus the square root of x. I saw all sorts. So what do we rationalize by? I even saw that you did not multiply some, uh, well, one person did not multiply these two. So you have to write x minus 4y. We have a contract on this. A minus B times A plus B is A squared minus B squared. Now the top is not a friendly situation. I have to distribute this to this and I get 2x. This to this and I get 4 the square root of xy. This to this and I get 3y the square root of x and this to this and I get plus 6y the square root of y. Next question. Nine 
Nine D is in dog, correct? Okay. In nine D we have to square. And as I said, we have an agreement. A binomial squared. I know it's not a binomial in the sense of a polynomial, but it's two terms. Two terms added. How many terms do I have to write? Yes. The first term squared. I have to square three and I have to square the square of x. What do I get? 9x plus 2 from the formula times 3 times 2. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 3 is 12. 12, the square root of xy. And plus the second term squared, but I have to square 2 and I have to square the square root of y. Plus what? 4y, indeed. Next question. Anything else? Which one? 9c. Okay. So 4, the square root of 2, 43, minus 7, the square root of 32, plus 5, the square root of 24. The, one, the only number that may create some problems is this, but in here I have 16 and 2, that's clear. And in here I have 4 and 6, that's clear. But I have to work on 243. Okay, so 243. Uh, if I add those digits, so it obviously it's not divisible by 2. But if I add all the digits, 2 plus 4 is 6, 6 plus 3 is 9, then I know that this number is divisible by 3. One more time, divisibility by 3. If you add all the digits, and the number you get is divisible by 3, then the original number is divisible by 3. Okay? So then I have 81. So I know what, how to split it then. 81 is a perfect square and 3. Is this step understood? Yes? Okay. So then I get, you can write it again if you want as, 4, the square root of 81, the square root of 3, minus 7, the square root of 16, the square root of 2, plus 5, the square root of 4, the square root of 6. You can if you want to. Now, I know that this will be 9. I know that this will be 4. And I know that this will be 2. Can anyone give us the final simplified form of the first one? Very good. Minus. Anything else? Eight. Which one? Eight. From the, uh, you said eight. Yes. yes. Right. Yes. So if you remember the square root is a problematic function. It's not our friend. Because x minus 4 has to be greater than or equal to 0. x must be greater than or equal to 4. So that's how we find the domain. And then I present the chart. When I plug in 4, I get 0. When I plug in 5, 5 minus 4 is 1, the square of 1 is 1. And when I plug in 9, I'm sorry, uh, when I plug in uh, 13, right? I get 9, the square of 9 is 3. That's all I need. And of course the range of such a function will always be, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 1, and so on and so forth. So here's the function. So f of x, the square root of x minus 4. So what is the range of this function? Unless it has minus in front or something else combined with it, the range will always be a 0 to infinity.
Yes. Which one? Six. Six. Six B as in boy. D. Uh, D. Very good. Okay. This is very similar to rationalizing because we are dividing two complex numbers. So over two minus three i. What will I multiply and divide by? 2 plus 3i, 2 plus 3i. Again, I'm using a minus b times a plus b. So this is 4 minus 9i squared. 3 times 2 is 6. 3 times 3i is 9i. Negative 2i times 2. Negative 4i. Negative 2i times 3i is negative 6i squared. Now I will replace i squared by negative 1. So then I get, since this is negative 1 times negative 6 plus 6, that will be 12. 9i minus 4i is 5i, and this is 4 plus 9, which is 13. I have to separate it. 12 over 13 plus 5 over 13 times i to show this, the real part plus the imaginary mark. Anything else? 6 a. 6a? Okay. Now we have 2 minus 3i. Everything squared. I have to write four terms. The first term squared minus 2 times 2 times 3 is 12i plus 9i squared. And I do replace i squared by negative 1. 4 minus 9, negative 5 minus 12i. Anything else? That's it? But if you have something else, I'll rather answer, if you have. I will post the solutions for everyone to see. I will. Anything else? 9a. Let's look at 9a. The cube root of 2xy squared times the cube root of 4x to the fourth, y to the fourth. First, I saw that you simplified each radical. It's not recommended. Not, not you. I don't remember who. So because they have the same index, first multiply them. 8, x to the fifth, y to the sixth. Now, this is friendly and this is friendly. The only one that needs work is x to the fifth. And I will have to split it into x cubed and x squared. So this becomes the cube root of 8, the cube root of x cubed, the cube root of x squared, and the cube root of y to the sixth. And the final form will be 2 from here, x from here, y squared from here, and this is the only one that stays under the cube root. If you remember, we said, please multiply them and not simplify each and every one of them because it will be way more difficult. If they have the same index, if they don't have the same index, it's a different story. But if they have the same index, always multiply first and then simplify only one radical at the end. 